Hello everyone, welcome to this video where we are going to be talking about using S Foundation to perform design checks on reinforced concrete foundations using the ACI 31819 provisions. For this example, we have a simple spread footing that has a couple different loads on it, and we're going to be performing a code check uh, to compare to the design code capacities for ACI 31819. Now to first of all explain uh, the model a little bit more, uh, if I just actually left click on this model, you can see the dimensions. Uh, so we just rotate it as a 3D structure, 30 inches thick, we have a 40 inch high pedestal. And I'm just going to switch to the plan view and we can see the other dimensions. So it's 108 inches on one side, 144 on the other, and our pedestal is 20 inches by 20 inches square centered on the pad. We also have a finite element model that's automatically created for us and this will help characterize the behavior of our model during the foundation analysis uh, and code checking process. We have a number of strip integration lines to calculate demands within the pad as well. And our pedestal is modeled as a member uh, that is connected using rigid body uh, links to basically connect the perimeter of that pedestal uh, rigidly to the pad itself. We also have rebar that's been defined and we're going to get into this in just a minute here. But you can see here that we do have, in this case, consistent rebar layouts and spacing uh, throughout the pad. And we'll talk about that more in just a second. Let me switch back to the 3D view, the isometric view that I was talking about earlier, and I'll go back to object view. And just to explain the demands on our structure first, if I go to the define menu, and I go to the design load cases, here I can see that I have two different load cases. I have a dead load and a live load case. We can have a lot more if we wanted to, but we're keeping this simple for now. And under the reactions load case, we can see the actual uh, results that are going to the top of our pedestal. Or, so the superstructure reactions essentially are landing on the top of the pedestal and forcing demands onto our uh, foundation. So we have a small lateral load, a large compressive load, and some moments as well on the y-axis. And this is for the dead load case, which also includes the self-weight of the concrete, the soil, and any buoyancy effects. I have the live load case as well, which doesn't include the self-weight of the soil or concrete or buoyancy, but it does also have its own set of reaction loads. You can see the magnitudes uh, that are shown here. And these are combined together into three different load combinations. So I have uh, one unfactored load combination. And you'll notice here that we're just running this for the geotechnical checks only. We're not running it for structural checks. So geotechnical checks would be soil bearing, uh, loss of contact with the soil, horizontal sliding, those sorts of things. And then the factored load combinations, well, you'll notice here that they are including just the structural check option turned on and not the geotechnical check. So that's going to be looking at comparing these demands from this factored load combination to punching shear, to flexure, one-way shear, and so on. And you can manipulate these uh, run settings as much as you like. Um, so feel free to adjust to your own specifications. Now, to just dig into this foundation a little bit more, specifically the pad, I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to the define pad pile cap dialog. And I can see all the parameters that were used to define the physical properties of my pad. Uh, for example, the material, the thickness that goes into defining the actual stiffnesses of the shells used to represent my foundation pad. And then at the bottom here, we have information related to our rebar. So we have uh, this rebar tab that shows us the we have top and bottom layers of rebar. We also have two strips that are used to basically calculate demands within our pad, uh, strip lines in orthogonal directions centered on the pedestal. And if I click on the uniform tab here, I can see that I actually have uniform rebar, meaning that it has uh, the same spacing in X and Y throughout the pad, uh, no matter what part of the pad I'm looking at. And I can see more details on that. I can see a column for X and a column for Y, and I have a row for top and bottom bars. And in each case, I have number seven bars, and they're at 12 inch spacing in both the X and Y direction. And because my uh, dimensions are different in X and Y, the bar count is slightly different but I could enter my bar count or my bar spacing and the opposite would be calculated for me. So just keep this in mind. These are the uh, calculated values that we are used to input uh, to represent our capacities. I've got my concrete code selected here as ACI 19. And now what I want to do is I want to go to the run menu 
and click on Analyzing Code Check. And this is going to run a nonlinear analysis uh, as well as a code checking process on those demands for my analysis. So I'll click Yes to run the analysis. And here I'm brought to the results screen. And what I'm showing here is the code utilization results. In this case, as foundation is graphically displaying the maximum utilization uh, for a specific check on my foundation. And the maximum utilization, as we can see, is 0.91. So about 91% of my capacity is being utilized uh, by this particular load combination. And it's showing me that it's a structural check, specifically the one-way shear uh, rigid check. So we have, a, we have both rigid and flexible checks for certain types of foundations. In this case, we're running both. If I actually expand on the right-hand side the design output window, I can see more details in this uh, result report or result uh, table where I can see my maximum uh, utilization again. I'll just make this a little bit larger. And I can see the, the result, whether it's passing or failing, the utilization, demand capacity, as well as a load case a combination in this case. So this one here is a one-way shear rigid check, and it's letting me know that this is caused by, or governed by the 1.2 dead plus 1.6 live load combination, which is one of my structural load combinations, my factored ones. The next one down is my soil bearing uh, code check, also rigid analysis. And this one is actually governed by not a uh, factored load combination, but an unfactored load combination because it is a geotechnical check. And if I wanted to drill down into these results here as well, I could just left click on the arrows in this tree result tree. And I'm gonna look at the governing load combination for this check, specifically in the details. And here I can see the object related to this. I just have one foundation, so it's pretty obvious which object is contributing. And I can see the demand where the locations of the demand are sampled uh, according to code provisions. I can see the shear from soil pressure, overburden pressure, and then the clause related to this specific design check. Additionally, I can see how the capacity was calculated with the design clause uh, included here as well, according to ACI 318.19, and in my overall demand and capacity for this particular strip. So in this particular situation, I have different utilizations in X versus Y, as you can see my uh, specific demands uh, were highest in the X direction, given the direction of my lateral loading. Now, if I wanted to, I could also output a design report. So I can go to the file menu and I can go to export, PDF, and export a report of my choice. And we'll be able to open up the PDF report. I haven't entered a project name, but you can see the details that are included in this to document our design.